Hello everyone, welcome to the Ophthalmology Business Podcast, where we help you develop your ideal practice with the help of other doctors and experts. The topics we cover include marketing, management, leadership, recruitment, HR, mindsets, and more. I am Nareen Arul Raja, the founder and one of the co-hosts of this podcast. Every listener of this podcast is welcome to join the Ophthalmology Business Academy, www.obacademy.org. The membership is on us and it's our gift to you. Our guest today is Mike Leons. He is an HR and leadership specialist and former director of human resources at Austin Retina Associates. We are super excited to have Mike with us today. And the topic we're going to be talking about is leading with emotional intelligence, managing stress, promoting empathy, and building strong relationships with patients and staff. I love empathy, and I think that's a topic that um, I think is definitely needed in, in, in our practices today. So, Mike, let's jump in. Before we get started, why don't you tell us your story? How did you get into ophthalmology? What brought you into this space? And uh, and where are you today? Sure. Well, um, Narain, thanks. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to be on the podcast. I'm excited to deliver uh, this talk here about about empathy and and uh, emotional intelligence. It's something I'm super excited about. Um, I got my career started really uh, when I was studying psychology. Wanted to be a counselor and a therapist, and uh, I realized uh, when I got into HR ultimately that uh, I kind of got to practice that on a regular basis. And so I consider myself a lifelong student of psychology and the way that people think. And I'm super excited and passionate about that stuff. Um, had about a 10 year career in HR, uh, took a little bit of a 90 degree turn and became a personal chef for five years. So I decided to listen to my, my own intuition for a little while and pursue a passion to serve others with food. Um, but then I returned to HR and that's where I got into ophthalmology and HR, um, in the HR world. So worked for Austin retina for a little bit over five years and really came to love healthcare and, uh, working with patients and the staff and the sense of mission that we get from being able to help people, uh, recover and maintain their sight every day. It's really one of the most magical, um, types of work that you can do in my opinion, uh, I'm no longer there with Austin Retina, but um, love the work that that they do and that everyone in the ophthalmology world does. So hugely supportive of all that. Awesome. Let's jump right in. So we're going to talk about emotional intelligence and we're going to touch on stress, empathy, relationships, both with patients and staff. Where should leaders begin in their efforts to lead with emotional intelligence? Before we even get that, why don't you define emotional intelligence for us? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you asked. Um, so emotional intelligence really has four components. Um, the first component is knowing yourself. So being aware of your own emotions, what's passing through, you know, your mind and your and your energy level, right? So being aware of that. Secondly, is having the skill to be able to modulate and modify your emotions and your own energy, right? So if you notice I'm upset, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, but you can't do anything with it, can't do anything about that, then you're going to be limited, right? And so the second component is being able to, 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 to address the things that come up within yourself. Uh, the third part is noticing others and how they're feeling, what their emotions are, what they're going through and being receptive to that. And then lastly, as you might be able to guess, is being able to influence others and being able to kind of address what they're going through. And that's that's uh, the fourth and final component. So where should leaders begin? Um, I think that first component is um, is really, really important. So I'm going to talk I'm going to talk a little bit um, more about that. Um, but and where it really starts is understanding um, neurology, neurology of emotion. Right. So the amygdala, that part of your brain that governs emotion um, is a powerful part of your brain. It's not where you do all your thinking and your rational thought. You've got your cortex for that. And so understanding that you have these two key parts of your brain um, is really important. Um, and they're kind of at odds with each other, right? Um, the second thing is realizing that human beings are wired 
uh, for, for fear and negativity. We have a bias for negativity, right? Um, people assume the worst with a lack of information. We assume something bad is going to happen. If someone has a, has a certain kind of expression on, on, on their face, the people around them are more likely to assume that they're mad or upset at them in the absence of information. Right. So, um, people have this body, they notice negative things more than positive things. And so some examples of this might be, uh, you know, your patients, your patients are going to talk way more about a negative experience than a positive experience. Um, you know, we talk about but those negative reviews, they're going to blast the terrible reviews on Yelp, right? You know, this as a marketer, and, yeah. and, but they're going to do as much effort to share those great experiences. Um, another example is, I don't know anyone who's ever said, gosh, I was up all night last night thinking about the thinking about the promotion I was going to get and how great my day was going to be tomorrow. No, people are up at night and they lose sleep because they're worried. They're thinking about things that will never even happen, right? I'm worried about losing my job. Uh, my child is going to get abducted or um, I don't know, I'm going to get sick or something like that. And and they, we worry, most of the things we worry about are never going to happen because we have this negativity bias, right? And so a lot of emotional intelligence is continually working to overcome this bias in, in yourself and with other people, with your patients and your staff. And so being aware of that is um, is super, super key. We're so wired to see threats out there. And so trying to turn that around uh, is something that you have to do every single day as a leader. So let's um, talk that talk about that. So you're saying best best one is being able to self-awareness right like being able to like notice your emotions notice yes. how you're feeling. and um i'm sure you have been in the ophthalmology space for quite a bit of time can you give an example of course i'm not looking for names or anything just um what are some of the times when the stress this you know where I, the, per, the doctor or the uh, you know the owner or even like a person working in the practice is feeling um i mean you can feel it they're not in a good place the way they comment the way they talk uh, yeah. And then, and then usually what happens is that rubs off on the other person. They get upset and it just creates this cycle of, you know, going down the hill, so to speak, you know. One, yeah, one. Abso absolutely. Um, you know, we all have had this experience. Um, it, we we can easily think of of situations, right? And so, uh, whether it's the physician or 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 the the chief executive or uh, even just colleagues, right? Uh, maybe they walk by they walk by your your desk and they seem stressed out, or um, they're really they're really upset about something, and um, and and they're emotionally hijacked. Right, their amygdala is going off, and and they are thinking of all the negative things that can happen. Right, and so you have to have that presence of mind to to realize that hey, don't get hijacked like they are. Right, and there are certain strategies that you can employ, right, to help bring yourself more awareness um, of what's happening to you, so you don't get hijacked. Right, and. Um, and so that's a key thing is, is recognizing, oops, I'm about to get hijacked here. My amygdala is going off. And so having that objectivity to say, don't don't fall into this trap right now. Um, in HR, a lot of times that happens when employees will come to you and they will um, complain about their coworkers and say, oh, he or she is so upsetting and, and, and they're gossiping about me, right? And so um, your tendency may be to... to um, to try to to try to tell them what to do, or um, try to hey I got to put an end to this right now, and you you stop being empathetic and you start going into problem solver mode, right? So that's something that in HR we had to deal with that a lot, right? So helping instead of instead of jumping in and solving the problem, walking them through and seeing it from a high level so they can solve it themselves. You know, how would you define empathy uh, in the context of emotional intelligence? What is empathy? In this context, you talked about the four things, uh, four components. Of yeah, absolutely. So empathy, yeah, empathy is just a, being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes and to be able to see what it feels like to be them, right? So maybe there's a physician who is upset because there was a, a bad review that, that came in online, right? Ah, why is there a one-star review on me? Like, you've got to fix this, right? And so what does that mean? Well, this physician, you know, this is their livelihood, right? And so a one-star review 
um, that's threatening, right? No one wants to be seen uh, as a one-star person. I like, you're not a one-star person. I'm not a one-star person. The physician is not either, right? And so we have to have empathy for that physician because they're in fear. They're in fear because they think that one-star review is going to destroy their practice, right? Which we know that's not really true, but they have that negativity bias, right? Um, and, you know, it's funny because that patient they were susceptible to the negativity bias. That's why they wrote that one star review, right? They were in fear that they weren't being cared for and they felt ignored or, or they didn't feel heard or their billing issue wasn't handled correctly, right? So the staff um, didn't demonstrate emotional intelligence. The patient wasn't regulating themselves. We have this one star review. Now the doctor, it's a whole cycle, right? Of this negativity bias circulating here. And so, um, that's a that's an example of where we have to kind of step back and say, I'm going to have empathy for you and realize that, you know, I would feel this way, too, if I got a one star review um, and let's figure out how we can solve this together. And so that's a key thing that you can you can teach yourself and practice and train your staff to, sh to show empathy towards patients and others. Let, let me ask you this. You talked about this negativity bias, right? I feel like it's more today than it used to be maybe 10, 15 years ago. I don't know if it's a social media. I don't know if it's post COVID. Um, can you attack this negativity bias? So you are perhaps not as prone to it. Uh, like for example, practicing gratitude. I don't know. I'm just asking. I'm just, cause what if, yeah. why don't we just go after the source of where all this comes from? Well, I love that you just mentioned gratitude. And so I think that is one of the key things that you can do to amplify your emotional intelligence is create a gratitude practice within yourself and 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 do that with the other leaders and the employees um, in your practice, right? So notice the little things. And I, I would even say the littler, the more insignificant, the better, right? So Oh, gosh, I woke up today. Um, I'm breathing. Um, gosh, I really appreciate this mouse. It clicks so well and, you know, just always works. Right. And so let's ask everyone every day. We're going to start our day and say, hey, what's something we're grateful for? We're going to have a gratitude minute here and go around with the technicians and the billing staff and say, hey, I want everyone to say something you're grateful for. And it starts to get people aware of um, the good things that are going on. It primes them to notice positive things. And um, I love that. That's a great practice. And uh, it's something that can help to ground all of us. Uh, and there are lots of little techniques, right, that you can use uh, to increase your positivity. But you talked about, um, is this getting worse, right? And I think absolutely, you talked about social media. It's so easy to just, just throw out your negative thoughts, right? And that computer has no empathy. The computer doesn't have any empathy for you. And so you can just share that review or you can send off that nasty email and um, there's no one there to receive that. There's no one there to counteract that, right? To show that empathy because empathy is really what can diffuse those situations. And so that's one thing that we would train our staff at Austin Retina when there was a problem, uh, first listen, and then number two was empathize, right? And so to show empathy for the patient, even if it was something that we didn't do wrong, we know that we handled everything as best we could and we handled it according to procedure and everything, but the patient was still upset. And so showing empathy uh, for that patient saying, you know what, I would be upset too, right? If my, if I was surprised by this bill and um, because things happen, right? Little things happen. And, and um, sometimes when you show empathy, um, really what happens is you build that relationship back up stronger than it ever was before because you've shown that empathy. And now the patient knows, gosh, if something goes wrong, they'll call me and they will, they will, uh, they understand, they understand and they get me. And that's what we all really want in life is just to be understood. And that's kind of what a lot of this is all about. Absolutely. Now, let's say you are a leader, perhaps the practice owner, you know, manager, and you want to build trust with your team. And I don't even like the word staff or employees because, you know, staff is like a stick and, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, your team is like you're working together and you're all, you know, like a football team, a soccer team, you know. Um, so you, you want to build a trust with your team. Um, and also they have this negativity bias. Um, and and like like you said, they're, they're almost like easily triggered, easily. Like it's mm -hmm. like one small thing can kind of trigger them. Like how do you turn that around? Yeah, 
So yeah, that's the first thing, right? So once you've got yourself emotionally aware, you've got to think about your team. And so building them up. So yeah, we talked about the gratitude minute is a great thing to do with your staff, uh, with your team, as you say. Um, <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, you know, one of my favorite things um, that I think all leaders should do uh, with their team is have FaceTime one-on-one -on -one with their team on a regular basis. And I believe that as human beings, we need that FaceTime. Uh, and I think in-person is ideal, but uh, FaceTime with people one-on-one, -on -one, no one else around. I'm going to make time for you, Noreen, right? This is going to be your opportunity to talk with me and you can share anything you want. If you want to talk about um, the football game, or if you want to talk about your child's uh, dance recital, or if you want to share some ideas about how to make the practice more uh, efficient and, you know, um, and schedule patients better or whatever. This is your time to do that. And you know, you have that scheduled time on a regular basis, maybe once a week or once a month to meet just with me. And I'm the manager, I'm the, I'm the doctor. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's valuable. That makes you feel important. Right. And so that is hugely important. And then another thing I'd really recommend during that time, or even as you're walking around and you're circulating and you're talking to the team and you're talking to patients, you're talking to the uh, technicians, um, your body language, right? So attention, the phone is away, uh, your eye contact is good, your body language is open and, and receptive. Um, that is hugely important because again, I think it's this is down at the at the lizard brain level, the amygdala level, that we look for signs of body language to create trust with other people. And if you're crossing your arms or you're kind of looking away or looking at your phone or kind of just turning your head, hey, oh, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm turning my head, but not really facing you with my body, um, you're going to damage trust that way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I could go on and on about this stuff. There's tons of little things that you could do on this one. There's, I love talking about how to build trust because it's so, so important as leaders. I love that answer. Let's kind of shift gears a little bit and talk about emotional intelligence as it applies to relationships with patients. So, I mean, maybe you have an existing patient, maybe you have a brand new patient. So how do you, I'm going to kind of throw a curveball, how do you build a relationship with the brand new patient? And perhaps not mm -hmm. the nicest patients, perhaps not the grateful patient, but maybe a little <laughs> cranky patient. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, every... Every relationship with an is a, is a one to one relationship with another person, right? And so, you know, you need to start by understanding who they are, right? And so, some of the best doctors that I have um, seen work, they start with that um, that person to person relationship. So, tell me about you. You know what? Tell me about your life, right? What is your life like now? And tell me about your family. And maybe they talk about oh, I'm retired and I've got my grandkids and and uh, I love to work in the wood shop or you know uh, quilting is a big thing for me or whatever the case may be right and so that does two key things right it a lot people love to talk about themselves um, that's just a fact and um, and so they feel trust when they, the more they get to talk about themselves they're going to trust you more. And so number one, so you've started to build trust there. Number two, now you know about what is driving them, right? From an ophthalmology standpoint, like, hey, I want you to be able to quilt. I want, I know that's important to you. You've got your, your friends that you quilt with and you sew with, or you want to be able to go in the wood shop and work with the tools. You know, I want to help you do that, right? And so now you've made a connection just not only personally, but also with your work that you want to share with them and ophthalmology and saving their vision. Yeah, so that's how I would that's how I would definitely start that. And then I would go further also in terms of building relationships with patients. You've got to train your staff. You've got to train your staff to be emotionally intelligent and aware, right, of, of their patients and and of key things that they can say to to um, show that they are have that care and concern and empathy for the patients as well, because patients, they're having their own emotions when they come into your clinic, right? They're, they might be afraid of losing their vision, or they might be afraid of what this is going to cost or how long it's going to take and all that. And so teaching them to be aware of others, um, others, their co their coworkers, their team members, and the patients too, that's huge. So let's kind of shift gears. Let's say you said there are four parts to emotional intelligence. And the last part was, um, you know, uh, 
being noticing when others are struggling with their emotion and being able to do something good with it, right? So in this case, I mean, this patient is not your brother, you're not your cousin, a patient, of course, you care about them as a patient. Let's say they're not in a good place emotionally and mm. you are the one with them, you know, what would you do? Like, and, and yeah. I, I want to kind of maybe hear your stories, what happened and how you you would, you handled it or how you would recommend somebody handle it. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of my stories are coming from the people side of the, of the, of the team, right? Because I'm the HR director, right? Sure. And so uh, many times I had um, team members come to me and express uh, frustration with their manager or, or frustration with another team member uh, to the point that they thought, I don't know if I want to be here anymore. I just don't feel welcome here. And, um, you know, it's so hard for all of our list, all of your listeners here to just keep their staff these days. Right. Um, and so we want to keep our good employees and we want to make, keep them happy. Right. And so they also have their emotions charged up from time to time. And so when employees, um, would come to me, uh, with those concerns, even if it was a concern, um, that I knew I might not be able to do anything about it or, you know what, um, this person is being is being fairly unreasonable right now, and uh, maybe they're not even that good of a performer, right? But I need to start with empathy, and so I need to I need to listen and say, you know what, I would be I I love the phrase I would feel this way too if this happened to me, right? And so you know I would feel that way too if uh, my coworker wasn't talking to me, or you know if I believe people were talking behind my back. I would I would be upset as well, right? And so you've got to, you always have to lead with that empathy statement uh, because people will never trust you. Um, they will never let you get to problem solving if they don't feel like you've heard them, and they won't feel like you've heard them if you don't address the emotional side of what they've had to say. You could say, uh, okay, I understand. It sounds like you feel like your, your coworkers are gossiping about you. Now we're going to solve that problem. No, that's just paraphrasing. And paraphrasing is great, but you have to address the emotional side of what's going on. And people, they need, they need that reassurance and that recognition that they've been heard emotionally uh, to really feel heard. And that is really a superpower that your listeners can take is always re reflect the emotion that you're getting uh, before you kind of get into problem solving. Right, right. You talked about the role of leaders in uh, uh, leaders, lead, role leaders play in fostering relationship with team members and patients. But the role of leaders can be highly stressful. How can leaders deal with stress? And, and, and at the same time, show emotional intelligence in all four components you just talked about. Right. Yeah. Right. So um, managing your energy, managing your stress is the most important thing you can do. It sets the, the table for everything. All of the things that we're talking about here, if you can't manage your stress, um, you won't be able to know, you won't be able to stop and pause and say, Ooh, I'm feeling upset. You won't be able to notice um, when your patients are upset or you'll have a very short fuse and you might snap on someone, right? And so managing your stress is huge, right? And so um, getting good sleep is key. Um, having good nutrition is very, very important as well. Um, for me, and I think very many people will agree with this, exercise, having an exercise routine where you are getting out, you're moving your body, is super, super important as a great way to start your day. These are foundational things that you can do for yourself. And then another thing I would say is identify at least two or three things in your life that put energy into your, into your emotional bank account. Okay. And so for me, that might be music. Um, I love music, listening to music, singing, playing music. It really makes me feel good when I do it. I feel um, way better afterward, right? Um, cooking is something that's a passion of mine, right? And so maybe that's for you, maybe that's um, doing something with your hands or maybe it's getting outside, but whatever it is that puts energy back into yourself, you probably know what that is. Um, 
do that as much as you can. Maybe do it every day or every other day, right? But you have to put back into yourself or you won't be able to be there for your team. You won't be able to be there for your patients. And so put your own oxygen mask on first. That's what they say on the airplane. And so do that by feeding yourself with good sleep, good food, and doing the things that you love to do. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that I started doing is meditating. So even if I just meditate it, you know, once a day, it makes a huge difference, like 20 minutes. Like yeah, I think totally, totally like, um, like, it doesn't matter how stressful, how tired you feel, it just brings you back. You know, yeah. that, that is the that is um, an incredibly powerful thing. Because uh, when you meditate, what you're training your brain to do is just to notice, you're just noticing your own breathing. And you're noticing the thoughts that come in and go out of your brain. And really, when we talk about emotional intelligence and that the most important thing is noticing your own emotions, meditation is a great training practice for noticing your own thoughts, right? And so a lot of times what happens is, um, you know, my wife might get upset, right? And I will be about to say something that is going to be very negative and throw something very bad into the conversation. But I will have a thought and I will say to myself, ooh, um, I just was about to say something that was not going to be helpful. And the more I meditate, the more I practice that mindfulness, the better I get at noticing the thoughts because thoughts lead to emotions I notice that thought and I can stop that thought before I throw it into that conversation. And so meditation, super huge. Great thought. Absolutely. Thank you. What are some of the resources our listeners can, you know, seek, seek out and, and so that they kind of improve themselves in EQ, emotional, uh, you know, intelligence? Yeah, absolutely. So again, for me, it all starts with your own mindset. So I'm going to recommend a few um, resources that will help you with your own mindset. Um, first of all, great book by a guy named John Acuff. He has this book called Soundtracks. It's all about the thoughts that go through your head every single day, starting to change those thoughts, putting better thoughts into your head. Mel Robbins has a great book, uh, The High Five Habit, very similar book. Um but love her energy. She has a lot of stuff on social media as well as John Acuff. Um, you know, there's another great um, book. This is from The Great Courses, um, but you can get it on audiobook, The Science of Mindfulness by Ron Siegel. He's a psychologist, talks about mindfulness and meditation. And so, um, Noreen, you talked about that. I think that's a great book for someone who's interested in getting into uh, meditation. So this book is called Soundtracks, right? The Surprising Solution. Soundtracks, of, yes. Of mm -hmm. I'm just, I just bought it. It's on Audible. Yeah. What's the second book? Uh, second book is The High Five Habit by Mel Robbins. Mm -hmm. Are they similar yeah, or different? High Five Habit. Um, you know, I think Mel Robbins, she puts a little bit of a different spin in terms of um, she, she talks about wanting to uh, be your biggest cheerleader, right? And so high okay. five yourself every day, give yourself a little bit of encouragement. <laughs> All right. Makes sense. Thank you so much. You're going to include these resources, um, you know, along with the show notes. So if anyone is interested, they can easily go and grab those books on Amazon or any, any other place. Uh, I really enjoyed my conversation with Mike. What, what do you do uh, to help practices or practice owners? And how can perhaps people connect with you? So just tell me a little bit about you know, how you are making a difference. Yeah. Um, well, I am a frequent contributor on LinkedIn and Instagram. And so if you want to follow me, um, you can find me on Instagram at Mike Lyons HR. And if you go on uh, LinkedIn and you search Mike Lyons HR, you'll see me there as well. Um, I'd also love to just offer to anyone listening, if they want to reach out to me on LinkedIn, I'd love to have a chat. We can have a Zoom chat about anything uh, leadership related I uh, would love to chat with you about it and, and learn more about what challenges you're experiencing out there and maybe direct you to some resources that can help as well. And um, yeah, that's what I'm really passionate about. Thank you so much, Mike. I enjoyed my, this conversation. I think I learned a thing or two that I didn't know before. So really appreciate your wisdom, your experience, your knowledge, and your passion around this topic. Um, uh, we'll put all those links you shared with us so people can easily find you. Um, I think we talked about a really important topic around emotional intelligence. So thank you for bringing that to the table and you know sharing it with us.
Equa Marketing, your key to a stellar online reputation. Book your free marketing strategy meeting with Ryan today. Visit www.obacademy.org slash MSM slash Ryan and take charge of your online presence. I also want to take a minute to thank our listeners. We appreciate each and every one of you. We cannot do what we do without you. If you like the podcast, share it on social media, share it with your friends. You know, you can write a review for us on Google or iTunes. Your reviews will help other doctors and practice owners find us. Till we meet again, wishing all of you an amazing week ahead.